It is my pleasure to introduce to you Hunter Peugeot and his mom, Sharon. Thank you so much for being on here today. I know it's a little bit late for you. You're in the fourth grade. You're nine years old, but we appreciate you being here. Let's talk about SMARD, which stands for Spinal Muscular Atrophy Respiratory Distress. That's a mouthful. <laughs> what is it like living with that, Hunter? Well, our family faces a lot of extended hardships, so, and it's very rare. There are only um, under a dozen people in the U.S. with um, this disease, and 80 worldwide. So we're doing whatever we can to raise awareness. How did you start to raise awareness? And I'm going to ask your mom first. How did, so he's diagnosed with this disease. What happens next? When Hunter was born, um, it was apparent to me very quickly that there was something substantially concerning happening with him. And we weren't sure exactly what that was. And um, it took almost a full year for he to be diagnosed. Um, we spent over a year in the hospital continuously. And there was barely anyone who had ever heard of the disease. Because and there's under a dozen people in the United States, and, and you yes. said 80 worldwide that you can find. When Hunter was born, he was the third child in the United States to be diagnosed with this disease. If there are such few cases, where do you go to start getting treatment for SMARD? We left Connecticut after, uh, Hunter was two weeks old when we left Connecticut. Um, we had come back for a brief period. Um, he was observationally diagnosed and um, we moved on to Columbia Presbyterian in Manhattan to be uh, clinically diagnosed. Um, we spent a year out of state and um, trying to work with, with people globally to get a handle on his disease. There were 11 published articles only available about SMARD at our access at that time and barely any medical people had heard of the disease, never mind friends, neighbors, or lay people. So Hunter, you saw your mom get busy and start researching this. I mean, you're a baby, now you're nine years old, and you're so much wiser than nine, because I've heard you talk. I've seen the things that you've done to try to w raise awareness about this. Did you go on Facebook? Did you start Googling this? I mean, how did you find other children that had the same thing you had? Well, we have um, kind of, well, my mom can tell you a little more about that. Because I'm, I'm assuming Google, Essentially, Facebook. I went online. Yeah. I went online. Um, it was not until Hunter was about six years old until we had become more connected. Um, there is a smart group online, a closed group for the fam, a global closed group for the families only to access. Uh -huh. And we communicate with each other there. Um, some families participate, some do not, um, but we can all transparently share information. And this is happening as much on a daily basis as we'd like to participate. What are you finding that is treatment? He has oxygen 24-7, I'm assuming. What is his care 24-7? So Hunter actually isn't on oxygen. He's, he's not? No. He's vent dependent. OK. Um, SMART is a, would you like to share? Yes. SMART is a extremely rare neuromuscular respiratory disease. So essentially um, the neuromuscular portion is the uh, muscular, the paralysis portion. Respiratory is the vent dependent portion. So Hunter's diaphragm does not work. That is part of his disease, unique disease profile. Mm -hmm. In order to move air through his body, um, he requires the use of 24-7 mechanical ventilation. So essentially Hunter is on life support around the clock. And that is a part of our, our daily existence. I would think that this is cost prohibitive. How are you dealing with expenses? It has been very difficult. <laughs> um, there, there are a lot of expenses, a lot of financial hardship. Um, there are a lot of items that are not covered by insurance. And um, doing all we can to ascertain them through private organizations and assistance from family and friends and just um, continuing to remain hopeful and 
reach out and raise awareness. And that's one thing about you. You have a smile on your face, Hunter, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and what makes you happiest about what you're doing right now? You're such an advocate. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, what makes me so happy is that, well, I went to the Capitol and testified for there to be a law for a, a Smart Awareness Day here in Connecticut. So I'm very happy that I am raising awareness. Would you like to be a lawmaker one of these days? <laughs> yeah. To change the world, right? Yeah. So you've been having fundraisers, and you brought me some candy that says Hunter's Hope and Heroes Yes. On it. So tell me about some of the fundraisers that you've been having. Well, the, um, the most recent fundraiser I've had was the Hunter's Hope and Heroes fundraiser. And it was for um, helping us with our medical expenses for items that we cannot afford. Like what? Tell me. Well, like we are like the light gate walking system. Mm. It is a system that um, helps me, will help me walk. Mm -hmm. I love that. Also, you've been getting some really cool things. Tell me about this, a junior officer. What yes. happened in North Haven? I became a junior police officer of North Haven, and they made me a junior officer because of my extreme bravery and courage. And what did you think about that? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Now we also have a junior police officer with a Port Authority Police Department in New York City. Yes. And the name of this building, of course? Is the World Trade Center, World Trade One. And what mm. do you know about the inside of that building, Hunter? Well, I went up to the 102nd floor and it wasn't even um, built, finished at the time. For so, a ceremony, tell me about that ceremony. Yes, there were Ten officers up there, and they held a private ceremony for me to become a junior officer of the Port Authority Police. How do you think you're going to change the world, Hunter? Well, I think I'm going to change the world because um, since I'm raising awareness for this disease so much, I think a lot more people will know about it and maybe perhaps start their own Smart Awareness Day in their state. Now, something is happening in Italy. Sharon, tell me about that. Would you like to say a quick something? Oh, first? sure. I, I don't mean to rain on your parade. <laughs> Go ahead, Hunter. We'll let Hunter have his moment. <laughs> tell me about Italy. his great news. Yes, some Italian researchers and scientists have found curative medicine for my disease. So the plan is to go to Italy, is that correct? Yes. Yes. And to stay there and deal with some doctors in Italy. Go ahead, Sharon. So in Milan, um, there's a team of very advanced, very smart um, researchers and physicians whom have for a decade long been studying SMARD and um, reaching for a cure. And four days after Hunter's last event, they released um, their most recent research article, which was heavily and strongly indicative of curative medicine for this identified extremely rare disease. There was a 450% success rate with this medicine, not only on mouse models, but they also utilize stem cells, human stem mm. cells. Um, the research article is available online, and it's extremely promising and human clinical trials will be available upcoming and they're working very hard on arranging all of that. So the plan is to go to Italy and fundraising has begun to try to get there. How can yes. people help you get there? We have a, a friend of ours had put together um, a UCaring, online UCaring page, which is uh, similar to a GoFundMe and it's a medical fundraising engine um, specifically for people with medical needs. Um, we really wanted to stick with um, the You Caring page to identify our need as being mm. medically related in that we're very 
dedicated advocates for SMART. So that was important to our family to maintain that affiliation. Um, Hunter has a website dedicated strictly towards reaching this goal of ascertaining this medicine in Italy. So we have it available online. It's, it's being shared. Hunter has his own Facebook page now. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does, right? I want to show a picture of a young gal from Scotland. Um, and tell me uh, how the two of you met. Now, she also has SMARD. Yes. yes. Here, here is her picture right here, Hunter. Um, what is the plan? Her name is uh, Shanice, is that correct? Yes. And what's the plan with Shanice? Well, she's going to come over here to the U.S. across the pond and thank me in person for raising awareness for our disease. How did you meet her? Did you meet her on Facebook or did she call you? How, how did the two of you get together? Well, we met online. We met online. Uh -huh. um, that was part of the, the... SMART is in such an extremely isolated, in, invisible, globally invisible disease. That is the problem. Um, there are no formal organizations set up to assist families with SMART to communicate or connect. So we ourselves created this online access on Facebook to be in communication with each other. And that essentially is all we have at our, at our disposal to, to share information. Um, in that way, she was a participant as a family member with SMART. And, and um, she found you, and it was kind of an eureka. Well, like, she had oh, joined the group. Talking about she it. had joined the group as we had joined the group, and um, we've posted pictures, and we had an opportunity to to talk with each other, and we just really clicked and resonated with each other. Our messages were similar. She's also very upbeat and hopeful. And she's 22 years old. Is and that she correct? is 22 she's years 22. old. She's 22. So she's beat the odds. She has beat the odds. Yes. As well. Yes. And we look forward to meeting her in person. Yes. So, Hunter, I want to ask you, uh, as somebody living with this disease, you, and we've talked about this before, you have a smile on your face, you have such hope in your heart, you're full of joy. How does that happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I share an very, a very empowering message of have hope, love, and never give up. So I always have a smile on my face because... I um, uh, never give up and do my best every day. And he's much older than nine. Do you, do you think <laughs> so, Sharon? I mean, you, you seem to me as if you are in your 20s or 30s, Hunter. <laughs> Hunter has always been a very precocious child. He is well beyond his years, as many have referenced, and he's extraordinary. And I know I'm biased because I'm his mom. Um, but I think I'm a pretty fair person as well, and I speak truthfully. Hunter has, has beaten odds on a daily basis, which are phenomenal. Um, with, his disease, with his specific disease profile, um, he was not expected to live past his second birthday. And he's going to be 10. On September 29th. On September 29th. Yes. We're hoping to ascertain all of the funds that are needed to receive this curative uh, medicine in Italy by his birthday. That would be a wonderful birthday present for Hunter and our family to have that ready and prepared. Um, so we want to thank everyone that will reach out to help us meet our race to the cure. Well, I just want to say that both of you are extraordinary beating something that's in such isolation and yes. that you yes. put it out there for so many people to be able to share and to start making a difference. Sharon and Hunter, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Thanks. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep locked in the grocery store of the mind. Just to save time, skip right ahead to the next ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you need me.